I'm Jane. I want to chat with you about some spiritual goodness. <laughs> I hope you're super duper well wherever you are in this now moment. And wherever you are in this now moment, I invite you to just take a couple of deep breaths and just get really present with this now. You don't have to think about being anywhere else, doing anything else going anywhere, you can just drop in and be here now with me, with yourself, with your breath, with your beautiful mind that's malleable, that you can open up and expand, connect back in with your heart, this infinite space of love that unites all of us here in this earth plane of existence. Whether we express it or not, it literally is the unifying force. Bring awareness to the earth, how she just always holds us. She never lets us go. She never, she hasn't kicked us off yet. She gives us everything we need, all the water, all the air, all the medicine, all the lessons, all the playgrounds. She gives us everything. She gives us life. She holds space for us to experience life, for us to create upon her, dance on her, cry on her grow on her, die on her. She even takes our dead bodies and if we if we actually allow ourselves to be buried in the soil, then she even takes our, our death and makes the soil more fertile for the next generation. What a magical experience that we get to live in. So there's that. So, hi. <laughs> so this is where we get to dive into some spirituality. Y'all, it's my favorite. And something that I wanted to talk about um, is is love. You know, we are moving into a time I feel that's becoming very divisive. A lot of people are experiencing um, discomfort with different rules that are made or um, rules that are changed. And instead of being, we're not taught because we're not taught how to love unconditionally through challenges and how to process things like disappointment, frustration, and anger and rage and and all of that stuff. So we just end up like shutting down or projecting and then we end up dividing and, and like fighting each other as opposed to coming back to the heart and deciphering what feels good, what doesn't feel good, and how can I be different? How can I be a change? How can I impart change? How can I still get what I want? How can I support people who are having a hard time? Even if I'm not having a hard time, how can I ask for support if I'm having a hard time? And because we're not taught how to do that, we just like fight each other. But we're made to like not. We're made to actually come together in times of challenge and hardship and, and, and remind each other that we have each other's back as like human brothers and sisters. And then like we can grow from that place. So <laughs> I wanted to pull a card. I want to pull a card for, for us, for love for unifying love, um, to inspire more love on this earth plane. So that's, that's the intention behind whatever card I pull. So. Boop. There's one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yo, we are like moving into a timeline where there is some divisiveness. There is some like anger and, and frustration and fear that's being brought up, um, a divisiveness between men and women, a divisiveness between the left and the right, a divisiveness between the old and the young, um, a divisiveness between rightness and wrongness. Um, and and I, t I, t I tell you what, <laughs> um, division is, is really lame. It really is the thing that has caused wars between everybody ever. It's, it's the I'm right, you're wrong. And that may come through as um, control. Like, I think you're wrong, so I'm going to control you. Or it looks like greed, right? I think you're wrong. You don't matter. You're not as important as me. You're not as good as me. So I'm going to take your land. I'm going to take your territory. I'm going to take your culture. You know, divisiveness literally is not in our, it's not in our nature. We're actually designed to unite, to come together in love, to be in harmony, to also be in disharmony. We're made to be 
in challenging times. We're made to not see the other's perspective. We are made to not agree all the time. We're made to do all of that and experience all that. And we're also made to remember the force that holds us together so we can always use that as the touchstone. So that's the the ground that we always kind of create upon, especially when we have hard times, right? It's like if somebody dies and you have the family that like fights over all the things and it's like, they're not even coming together and holding each other during this time of grief. So that's all this unprocessed grief that they're literally going to be carrying around with maybe the, the China or, you know, the, 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 the car or whatever, you know, it's like, I got the car. Well, I got the China. It's like, yeah. And you both have unprocessed grief because you didn't have the capacity to, to connect with each other on, on what was actually unifying you. And what was unifying you was the, the sadness of the death. You know, what is unifying us is, you know, the loss of control, the feelings of not being in control, the feelings of, um, people taking away rights or freedoms or liberties or the feeling of not being cared about, the feeling of being um, gas lighted, <laughs> gas lit, you know, being marginalized for experiencing emotions when we're upset and then being told that that we're just crazy, you know, um, that that we will divide ourselves when truly we could unite on so many fronts, forgetting that there is power in numbers, that love is like legitimately a healing force of energy. And when we can unify in numbers in the force of love, we become so potent, so magical, so big in our own sovereign and collective potential to create this experience on earth. We actually can do this. And it baffles me that so many people are still fighting. <laughs> like, like have, 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 have we not learned? <laughs> like, have we not learned that, like, bullies suck? Like, have we not learned that? Have we not learned that, you know, to not stand up for those that are bullied is, is turning a blind eye and it's just not cool? Like, can we get, like... I am like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of over it. Like, I think it's just kind of BS at this point that we can't, that not that we can't, that we choose, we collectively, and I'm putting all of us in it because until there's peace on earth, there's not, there's not peace for any of us. Like, can we not just kind of like get our shit together? You know, and, and I think it's really just this deep misunderstanding and projecting on others what we think that they're feeling, what we think they believe. And we don't get to know people. We don't get to like really dive into ourselves first of all. I know so many people that like legit, legitimately have no idea who they are. They don't know what they really like and what they really need. They really don't know where they have pain points, where they've experienced traumas. They literally have no idea because they're not brave enough to dive into themselves because they're too busy being distracted or, or drugging themselves. I was totally one of them, so I'm legitimately talking about myself in a different timeline. And I'm assuming that you or you know someone who is or was the same, right? So it's like, if I don't have the, the guts and courage to go within myself to, to really dive in, to dive into these really dark, gross places of sadness, of grief, of fear, of anger, of frustration, of, of lack of control or loss of control or being abandoned or rejected. Like if I can't go in there and be with that, then how could I ever be in a relationship with another human in kindness? Because if I can't look at their shit, then I can't see their light, right? Because to see the whole someone is to see the holiness in someone to me. So something that I think can help us, you know, is, is like looking inward and, and really being with ourselves. Um, and I had read this book a while back. Excuse me, Yanni Yonerson. Um, I'm very relaxed right now. Um, but I read this book back when I was married. So that was that was a couple minutes ago. And, you know, because I just wanted a better marriage. You know, it wasn't bad. I just wanted it to be better. I wanted there to feel like there was more love between us. There was this deep sense of love. Like this, like, you got my back, I got your back forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Um, and I wanted a, a more, I wanted to experience love more with, with him. I wanted to, 
feel the butterflies or feel special. And I wanted him to feel special. I wanted him to, to have the googly eyes whenever he saw me, you know, like I wanted that even after, you know, the fifth year, the sixth year, the seventh year, the eighth year of being together, you know, that's why we left, that I left him after the ninth year, you know, um, anyway, love him. I do anyway. So I found this book and some of you may have heard of it. It's the five love languages and I haven't thought about it in forever. And I just saw it on my bookshelf and I was like, I want to talk about this. So it's the five love languages by Gary Chapman. Um, I must say that this was very helpful in self exploration to what resonates for me, what feels good, what feels in alignment, what lights me up and what doesn't. And also for me to recognize patterns in my then husband on what activated him, what lit him up, what was just not in his reality. Like what did he just not care about at all? So it was, it was just, it was insightful for me to kind of start the process. Um, I think that the way it's written is very limiting. Um, it's like, this is your love language. And I'll get into this in a minute. This is your love language and this is it. Well, I don't agree with that. So the whole premise of the book does not resonate for me. The concept of it to like look inward and, and really find ways that light us up that are loving and kind. So the five love languages is basically a, mm, a model of sorts that I'm trying to find, I should have looked at this beforehand. Um, it's how we relate to each other. So basically the book is about how we relate to each other and how do we show love. Um, how we show love is a reflection, a direct reflection of how I like to receive love. Okay. So for example, if I really love receiving love in the form of hugs, I'm probably going to hug a lot of people, right? I'm going to be like hugs, you know, um, if I love receiving gifts, Oh God, I love opening the gifts and da, 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 then more than likely I'm going to be a gift giver, right? So this concept works really, it's really great just to kind of have that awareness of like, what do I like? You know, it's just like, it's like, you know, your astrology and you look at it and you're like, oh, that's cool. That is, that is very accurate on, on parts of me, but it's not all of me, right? It's like astrology tells you like, well, the sun was here when you were born and the moon was here and this was in Virgo and this was in Libra. And here's the thing. We all have all of the signs because we're made of literally stardust. So people can get very limited in astrology and be like, well, I'm a Sagittarius, so I am this way. And, and really neglecting all of their other parts of being their other aspects and expressions of behavior. So this book can be very limiting. So, um, but I feel that if this were just like a baseline of humaning, that it could be just a really good starting point for people to be able to communicate and show love to others. Um, and I just, and I just think that that's important. <laughs> Literally, it's like mm, Avenue to world peace. Let's show love. But if I am a hugger and you like gifts and I go to hug you, you might be like, yeah, thanks. Like, cool. But you're not going to feel that like, yes, until I give you a gift. And you might be like, oh my God, she really loves me. And I might be like, I just want to hug. Why don't you ever hug me? Why don't you like, you give me these gifts all the time. Like, thanks. But like, I just really want to hug. So until we can get on the same page, right? So that I can give you what you would like and also communicate what I like, you know, when I, when I, when we can get to that point, it, it helps communicate, communicating in love. Right. And if we're not going to get on that same page, it's just like throwing darts in the dark. You, you have no idea where the bullseye is, you know, like you can try, you can try a bunch of different things and you know, you might hit the mark. You never know. But to me, it's just way easier to like know what I need and, and more, know about me in the now moment so I can communicate it and also ask the reflective questions of others. Like, do you love this, that, and the other? And, and kind of hold space while they are in that space of exploration or maybe they already know and then it turns into a really cool conversation. So the five love languages that Gary Chapman talks about, um, there is words of affirmation, 
So you are so beautiful. You are so kind. You are so loving. You are so beautiful. I love it when you clean the house. I love it when you pick me up from work. I love the way you make me lunch. Right? So that's words of affirmation. I think everybody could get on board with that. And there's also some trauma around that, right? So, you know, if some of us have ever experienced words of affirmation and then it led right into something negative, right? Like, oh, you're so pretty. And then maybe the person's like, oh my God, thank you. And next thing you know, like maybe you're taken advantage of. So words of affirmation can be a little upsetting, right? So that's, that's why knowing these things are really important because like, I am, I love words of affirmation. Like, thank you. Like acknowledge my existence, please. I, I really enjoy that. Um, so if I'm telling someone words of affirmation all the time, they literally might be getting like a trigger and activation, a trigger response. It might be re-traumatizing it. They might like really back off. I would never want that. Right. I want to, I want to share love to them if in a way that they can feel it. So then if I learn that, okay, words of affirmation, that's not their jam. That's my jam. That's okay. I don't need to pour it onto them because it's not the flavor they like. But if their love language is, let's see, the second one is quality time. So say their love language is quality time. I can tell them all day that I want to hang out and because of how great they are. But until I actually show up to spend time with them, it they 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 they, they don't feel the love. So I'm curious if that's you, right? If you're like a words of affirmation. If you're like, oh my God, I tell people all the time all these great things. And I really love it when people tell me these things. Or you're just like, I don't care. And, and some of you may be like, mm -mm, I actually don't really care for that at all. And so the other one is quality time. That's like, you know, when you and your best friend or someone you really care about, like you just really get in that deep conversation where you feel connected, where you feel vulnerable, like you can share anything. You know, you're not looking at your watch. You're not distracted on your phone. You're not like, wait, what'd you say? I wasn't paying attention. You're like you're actually there and really present with someone. That's quality time. That's something that so many in our, so many humans in our, in our society don't even get. Like legitimately, there are people that don't get quality time with another human, you know, like say, you know, you, you're, you're, you live somewhere and you know, you get a visitor and they just like, they run in, they get what they need and they're like, thanks, bye. And you're like, what? Like, I don't mind giving you that stuff, but like, can, can you hang out and pretend like you like me for a minute? Or did you literally just come in to use me for whatever it was you just took? You know, so quality time is something that I feel like we could all use. <laughs> um, the only trauma that I can think about that can kind of come with that is um, not feeling trust. If someone has had a lot of trauma around um, opening up in trusting ways and like letting someone in, letting someone into my heart or to my home or whatever, if I don't have trust then quality time may be um, a little bit triggering for me, you know, so it's not for everyone, right? So knowing that, so ask yourself, like, is quality time one of my things? Do I really like, I love it. And you can have more than one. You're just going to have one that's more dominant and we're all of them in some way because it's all part of human nature. So just ask yourself like, and there's like a quiz in the book so you can like rate yourself and get like the real numbers. Um, anyway, so ask yourself like, is quality time my jam, you know? And then I ask myself like, do I give myself quality time, right? Do I give myself words of affirmation? Mm, that's, those are important questions. So the third one is receiving gifts. Y'all, I've been in so many relationships that gift giving was the love language. Like they just love to give gifts. I don't, I'm not a gift giver. And I've had people that just are like, wow, you've never given me a gift. And I'm like, no, but I tell you every day how much I love you. Cause words of affirmation is more of my jam or was my more my jam at the time than receiving gifts. I love gifts. Do not get me wrong. Give me a gift card any day, every day. And I'll just use it on stuff I need. But anyway, but receiving gifts, you know, so say you're someone that loves to receive gifts and so you give gifts all the time and you don't ever receive gifts in return. You're going to feel really incomplete. You're going to feel like, wow, I'm just giving all my energy all the time and all they want to do is just hang out and talk, right? Because if you're not a quality time person and you're a gift giver or receiving gifts is your love language, well, you're going to feel really like, meh. 
You won't feel good, you know? And then the communication around it doesn't, like the communication starts to lack. It starts to kind of go downhill. You know, but if we have the communication to say, hey, I really love receiving gifts. Um, I know that you love receiving, like you love quality time. So how about next time we hang out, like can we do a little gift exchange too? You know, or, you know, every time, you know, you see me, you bring a gift and then you kind of run, you know, that's really great. And I appreciate the gift. And I would also like to feel the gift of you. And can we hang out? You know, so being able to really communicate these things comes in really handy. The other love language is acts of service. I did that, that big breath because I guess I needed oxygen. And um, my ex-husband was an acts of service. Like if you said, hey, I need, I need you to lift this heavy thing. He'd be right there. I need you to hang up the ceiling fan. I'm on it. I need you to help me put together a bicycle. Done. Like I need you to, can you do this for me? Yes. He was always on it. That was his love language. He would just pour out acts of service all the time, which is so kind, so loving. Um, I do acts of service and I appreciate them when they're done for me, but it doesn't really land the same way as maybe quality time for me. And so for he and I, you know, we would, the, we wouldn't spend quality time together. We would spend a lot of time together, but it would be like watching TV, you know, or going out to a restaurant and eating. And, and it was, I mean, going to a restaurant and eating is like, it's nice and it's quality time. And you're also there to get the thing done. You're there to like feed yourself. So it wasn't just like, we're just two people really deeply connecting. Um, and there's a cardinal outside. It's really bright red. Um, all types of critters out there right now. I don't even know. I see something out there, but it's too far away. It's like hiding in the garden. I think it's a bird. I know y'all really don't like care about this, but I'm just super curious. Anyway, maybe it's a bunny. I think it's a bunny. Oh, bunnies have been out. Anyway, so acts of service. So he would always do these acts of service and I would be super grateful, but I just wanted like quality time with him. And, and I'm sure he felt not as loved maybe because, you know, I wasn't doing acts of service for him all the time. I mean, I would do things like cut his hair and cook him dinner and, you know, make meals, do the laundry and da, 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 da. Like I did a lot of stuff like that, the very domestic things. And because in our culture, they're kind of like, things that we're supposed to do if you're in a woman body. That's like the, the program. And so I don't know if he really registered it as like, wow, that was such a nice act of service, Jane. Thank you. Right? And because words of affirmation were so far down on his list, he didn't communicate. Wow, Jane, that's awesome. Thanks. You know, I love the way you do the laundry and put it away for me or whatever, you know? And so being able to have that awareness for both of us would have been really supportive for us to offer what the other one needs or really resonates with, right? It's kind of like if someone's thirsty, I mean, yeah, I can give them water, but if they're like, I'm really thirsty for tea, I just really want tea. I want to give them tea, you know, like I don't want to give them coffee. I, I want to give them what they actually want because it just feels good to give someone what they're truly calling for and not just like a, a watered down version. Like, well, it's good enough, right? Um, the last one, is physical touch, physical touch. Um, oh wait, I didn't go into the potential traumas for some of them. Um, receiving gifts, there can be potential traumas around that. So say some, say you've had experience or someone's had an experience where every time they were given a gift, they had to give something back in exchange. For example, um, you came home and your friend, um, gave you a, a, a shirt. Uh, it is a bunny now it's running toward me. <laughs> uh, anyway, so say, say you get home and your friend is there and they gave you a shirt and you're like, oh my God, thank you so much, right? And then maybe you have a trauma because maybe then they were like, well, now you owe me. 
you know, you either owe me, you owe me money or next time we go out, you know, I got you that shirt. So you got to pay for this. You know, so sometimes there were like catches with gifts that we would receive. So being aware that if someone doesn't enjoy receiving gifts, it's not maybe anything about you. Literally, they may have a trauma around it. It just may not be their jam. Maybe they don't care about adding more stuff and things onto this earth, right? Maybe they're minimalist and they're just like, wow, I don't need more stuff and things, right? So there could be traumas around that. So just having that in the awareness and being sensitive to it. Acts of service are kind of the same way. Sometimes um, someone's done something for me and then they're like, well, what are you going to do for me? It's like, oh, I, th I thought you were just being kind. I, what, I mean, I can, I can do something, but I wasn't, I didn't have it in my thought. I thought you were just being kind, you know? And so having that in communication beforehand, like if, if I'm doing an act of service, is it, is it an act of service or is it? I'm doing this only so I can get something back. If it's the latter of the two, then it's not truly an act of service. It's just an act, right? It's just, it's just a barter at that point, right? So just having that in our awareness so that we can be kind if, if we do offer an act of service and also maybe being really clear like, hey, I'm doing this just because I love you and I want to and I don't want anything in exchange. I actually just want you to enjoy it, you know, and really um, confirming that for the recipient because they may not be um, an acts of service love person, but communicating that will, will kind of hit them in the heart and be like, oh yeah, that feels good. Like, thanks, I appreciate this even more, right? Because again, this is all about how can we communicate and navigate through divisive times in the, in the one way that unifies us, which is love. So the other love language is physical touch. Let's talk about the trauma around that one real quick. So um, some people don't like to be touched. <laughs> some people are highly sensitive and they don't like feeling the energy or they're sensitive to textures and they don't like the, the feeling of different materials on their skin if other people hug them. Maybe they're sensitive to smell and somebody's all fragrant stuff. I hate that shit, y'all. If you are heavily in the perfume and cologne world, if you can just like stop so much because it's just not even cool anymore and it hurts a lot of brains and like nose passages. It's just not even necessary. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> heavy, heavy fragrance are not my love language. Um, and that's from coming from the girl that used to spray on so much perfume all the time when I was a smoker, cause I didn't want people to smell the cigarettes. So I would just blind them in their nose with the smells. Anyway, physical touch. You know, if anyone's ever been physically abused or hurt or been physically, um, touched without consent, you know, physical touch may not feel good. It may not feel safe. It may not feel welcome. So if I'm a hugger and I'm going up to someone and I just immediately go up to them and I snuggle them, I may legitimately be causing a big trauma response in them. That's where consent comes in. Before we ever like go into anyone's energy field and get that close, and especially before we touch a human at all, whether you're touching their hair or hugging them, ask for consent. Hey, I would love to give you a hug. Can we share a hug? Would, I would like, would, I would like a hug. Do you want to do that? You know, may we hug? Can we do that? Like get that consent because that person may be wanting to hug you all the time. And maybe in that now moment, they don't, they're just not feeling it. And to be able to honor that no, um, is a part of the language of love, right? Speaking and loving, like the languages of love are, are very, um, they're consensual. And, and they're kind and they're also, we, the language of love also includes the word no. You know, no is a form of love. <laughs> it's a form of love for myself, for someone else, for the earth, for whatever it is, right? If someone's like, hey, do you want a McBurger? I'm gonna say no to that because I love my body more than putting that in it. My body won't like it. It's not real enough for my body. My body won't process it very well, right? So no is a part of the love languages, um, but physical touch. So, you know, thinking about this, you know, what are you dominant in? Like, do, are you like, man, I just, I love a massage, I love a facial, I just love being touched, hold my hand, touch me all the days, all the days, all the days. Are you like, I mean, yeah, like being touched is nice, but like, man, it's that quality time. There's nothing like it. Or is it words of affirmation, right? Just like, Tell me how much you love me because I love to tell you how much I love you. Are you a gift giver? Are you loving to receive gifts? 
Are you an act of service? Do you just love to be of service? You know, you're the one that's going to show up when someone needs to move and you're there with your truck and you're like, what? I got you, right? So just kind of be aware of like what you are. Now think about some people in your life, whether it's your partner, little burp, your little yawn, weird. Um, you know, think about people in your life, you know, and do they really light up? And, and when you do, when you speak your love language and here's the thing, it doesn't mean that they don't need your love language. Okay. So like say your love language is a hug and it's just not theirs, but they don't have trauma around it. It doesn't mean they don't need hugs. Okay. It doesn't mean that you know, you and I don't speak, you know, you and I don't have like words of affirmation high on the list, but it doesn't mean that we don't need to hear, Hey, I actually love you. I, I, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate this relationship. Right? So being, being real aware that all these languages are all really useful in how we communicate in loving kindness. Right? It's also being able to like push the magic button on someone's little love, love, love nugget part of their heart, you know? It's like, if I know that you are, or my partner is um, a quality time person, and you know, I'm really busy, you know, I'm really, I'm a really busy person. And then I'm like, you know what, I'm taking this week off to be with them. It's probably gonna mean a lot. I may not really, it may not really mean as much to me, but it might really mean a lot to them. And to me, sharing love is the ultimate act of service. You know, like sharing it through touch, through words of affirmation, through quality time, like you name it, like sharing love in any form is a divine, like sacred act of service. And I think we've forgotten that because we've been conditioned to keep fighting each other. Fight, 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 fight. Talk about how right you are. That's wrong. That's wrong. This shouldn't be like that. <laughs> Not even able to see the silver lining on how things are actually bringing us together if we allow it, you know, but the silver lining is the choice, right? Like that's, we choose to look wherever we look, right? Like, am I going to focus on the silver lining? Am I going to focus on how we're uniting and coming together in ways? Or am I just going to focus on the things that I don't like and just keep perpetuating it, right? Anyway. So these love languages, you know, like I said, it's not, it's not a book that I like use as a reference to apply it in my life. And I think it's a really great book to just like kind of have in your back pocket when starting relationships or getting to know new people, um, and new relationships with your boss, you know, like you really want to get along with your boss with anybody. I'm just using boss as this example, you know, and your boss is a words of affirmation person. So they're always telling you how you're doing such a great job, you know, how good they would feel if you turned around to them and said, yo, Holmes, you're doing such a great job too. I really appreciate the way you are running this business, the way you're managing it. You know, like I can't imagine having all of this on your plate and you're doing a really good job. Like, could you imagine how like they would just feel, you know, like, and, and we choose to not do that, right? We're, we, we're, we're conditioned to be afraid of fully sharing these loving things. You know, well, what if I give this gift to this person now they think that I like them? You do like them, you human. But it's when we form all these like extraneous expectations on like, oh, well then that means that, oh, I gave them a gift. No, great, now I'm their, I'm their boyfriend or I'm their girlfriend. It's like, no, and that can be communicated too. Like I'm giving you this just because I like you as a human and I appreciate your place on this earth. No expectations. I don't want anything back, you know? Um, and it doesn't tie us in. It's not a commitment, right? It's just, it's just being in the now moment speaking different ways, showing love, showing up in love in different ways. So I, I wanted to talk about that, especially now during these kind of like dividing times. And I don't want to, I want to share the card. It says Layla. Check this out. That's a really beautiful image. This is the roomy deck. Look at that baby. Isn't that pretty? So I want to read what this one says. The roomy poem of it all. Love it all, love it all. 
Oh, this is a long one. I'm excited. Okay. It says, put aside your clever schemes. O oh, lover, be mindless. Become mad. Dive into the heart of the flame. Become fearless. Be like a moth. Turn away from the self and self and tear down the house. Then come and dwell in the house of love. Be a lover. Live with lovers. Clean your chest from all hostility. Wash it seven times. Then fill it with the wine of love. Be a chalice for love. Be a chalice. You must be all love to be worthy of the beloved. When going to gatherings of drunks, be a drunk, become drunk. I don't necessarily agree with that. Your thoughts take a course, dragging you in its wake. Move beyond thought. Let your heart lead. Be the leader. When the grace of love is revealed, be your mirror to reflect it. When the beloved's hair is loosened, brush it like a comb. Be a comb. Well, that's pretty appropriate considering what I was just talking about. Just be love. Right? Like, be love in everything. Be love in the way we speak to others. Be love in the way we show up for others. Be love when we're giving of service. Be love in service. Be love with, with, with the time that we share together. You know, be love in the gifts that we share. Maybe it's the gift of your presence. Maybe it's the gift of a book. You know, maybe it's the gift of a gluten-free chocolate cake. Um, but, like, be, be love in all ways. Always be in love. You know, if, if you're going to fight, fight someone for something, fight in love. Speak up for love. Fight for love, for freedom, for liberation, for all, for the freedom to be in love, for the freedom to, to express love in the way that we express it, which is going to be different, obviously. In all ways, we're going to be different in the way we show up and share love, but just be committed to that, to being love. Talk it, speak it, think it, show up like it. Because here's the thing, y'all. We, we get this life. We get this life in this body. I don't care if you believe in past lives, future lives, next lives. It doesn't matter. You're in this one right now. And this is the one where we can make a difference. So that if we do come back in another body, if that's, if that's the part of the program, I want to leave it better than I found it so that when I come back, it's cooler, more loving, more kind, more hospitable. You know, just duh. So I'm putting that one out there. So anyway... Don't divide, unite in love. It's really the only way for like legit peace. Unite in love with the relationship with yourself, with each others, you know, make amends or say goodbyes. You know, if you can't make amends, just say goodbye. It's okay. You know, like you'll be loved again. I saw a sign today that was like, the, you haven't met all the people in your life that are gonna love you. And I was like, damn straight, you're not. I haven't, I haven't met all the people that are gonna love me. You haven't either. More people are going to love you. It just is. Like, how cool is that? Unless you're a total turd burglar and, you know, you push it away. But, like, be love. Let more people love you. Love more people. That's the invitation. It's all about love. So, I love you. And I appreciate your time. The time that you take to check this out. To just be present with yourself. To see through a different lens in the now because I'm only going to share things through my lens and you don't know everything from my lens. Like I don't know everything from your lens. I want to know it. So feel free to comment. I go back and I read them. I love to do that. And just remember how loved you are. Okay. So take care of yourselves. Take care of each other and love, 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 love. Okay. I'll see you later.